Hello. Recently I purchased, well not recently, two months ago, the uh, Tandem T-Slim Insulin Pump. And one of the concerns I've always seen on the internet are people talking about the pump warming up while it's charging, which may be ruining the insulin, yada yada yada. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can say, I can just share my experience here. And this is what I've discovered anyway since I've been using it for the last two months. TSIM does, or Tandem does recommend actually charging the pump on a daily basis or at least topping the battery off. I, I can say I'm actually bad at that. I don't do that. After all, according to their spec page, it actually does include a lithium polymer battery. And if you know anything about lithium polymer, when they're done, they'll just die off. And most likely TSIM has circuitry in place that will prevent the battery from going below 3.3 volts since I'm assuming it's a single cell battery and preventing any damage to the battery because those batteries can't or are not supposed to be going under 3.3 volts. Uh, and of course, you know, I'm going to charge it by then because, well, the pump's probably worn to me and probably turned off at that point, so that that's a no-brainer there. In the meantime, uh, I've charged it with a few different items. I've charged it with this is T-Slim's own charger that it comes with. And on T-Slim's own charger, you can actually see it is a 5-volt, 1-amp USB. So that tells me 5 volts at 1-amp. I'm also safe to charge it with my iPhone chargers as well. That is, when I say iPhone charger, I mean the one with the green dot, the one that says, designed by Apple in California, not the $4 one you picked up at the local Mini Mart that looks like this, that has been known to suspectively electrocute some people in other countries. I wouldn't trust any expensive piece of equipment to a very cheap charger. So this one I definitely trust. Um, but for the sake of this demonstration on whether the T-Slim actually heats up and causes the insulin to go bad, let's go over a few simple basic facts that we know. Fact one. I'm going to use the default equipment, the default charger, and the default 6-foot micro USB cable it came with, with a charcoal filter on it to prevent any type of electrical interference to the pump while it's hooked up and charging to me. I have charged it with other cables without the filter and have not had an issue though. I will make a note of that. Known fact number two, I pump with Novolog. I also have Humalog in the fridge. Uh, the other insulin that seems to break down after 24 hours out of the vial. I can't remember the name of it. It begins with an A. I tried it. In a pen form, it just didn't work for me anyway, but I understand it's not recommended to pump with that anyway. What do we know about Novolog? Well, we know Novolog specs, according to the manufacturer, does say that you want to keep it and not have the temperatures exposed to temperature over 98.6 degrees or 37 degrees Celsius, such as in a sauna or with long showers. Okay, so what we have is the time, we'll use this as our timestamp actually. Our timestamp is 11.32 right now. And I keep the pump, personally, in my change pocket, right there, underneath a flannel, if it's cold inside my house, as a matter of fact. So let's go ahead and pull this out, if I can get it out. All right. <clears throat> so here's the T-Slim pump. I'm at 30% charged. So I got plenty of room to go here as far as the charge on this thing. So I'm going to be giving it 70% charge. Somebody said it takes about a minute per 1% to charge. I think they calculated it as something like that. So based on that, this thing will be charging a little over an hour. So, uh, we know it's been in my pocket, and we know that this is a thermal gun that actually will tell you the temperature. So if I zap that, 84 point eight degrees and that's after being in my pocket 
under my flannel against my body heat for at least the last hour. So it's still not over 98.6. I highly doubt we're going to be able to get it to go over 98.6 even while it's charging. But we will plug it in. Our time is 11.34. We'll use all the default equipment while we're doing this. See, I'm getting tangled in my cords and stuff here. So we'll run this charger, which is the one it came with. We'll plug that in there. We'll use the USB cord that was provided by the manufacturer with the filter on it. A standard USB to micro USB. Just a side note why I do this. You can charge it at a slower rate at a half an amp or 500 milliamps, like most USB 2.0 computers actually have in the case of Mercy or most car adapters actually these days. Um, or if you, you might actually have a newer MacBook Pro or a computer with a USB 3 port. If that's the case, then that is actually a 1 amp charger. USB 3.0 spec actually indicates that it should be 1 amp power. So with that one amp of power, you're actually, if you plug it into that computer, you're just charging it at the same rate of the charger that the manufacturer gave you with the pump to begin with, so it shouldn't be much of an issue. It's really hard to do one handy here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. There we go. And I'm getting my cords all tangled. Boy, am I tangled. Okay. I think I'm free. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll leave that in. Maybe we'll cut it out for the fun of it. So I'll leave this here. Starting temperature, again. It's cooled down a little bit since I took it out of my pocket. It's at 82.5. I'll do this to show you guys that it is charging. It does have the little charging battery symbol. It did beep twice and vibrate it twice, indicating that it was plugged into a power source. It's at 30%, and we're starting at 11.36 p.m. So, I'll amend this in about 70 minutes. And, actually, I'll do a little bit before then. I'll actually set my timer for 55 minutes. And at that point, we'll take another temperature reading to see exactly where it stands. And, by the way, my house is... Your average temperature right now, we're dead of winter. Uh, I keep my temperature set around 72 to 71.5 right now, according to this cardboard box. That's about right. So you know what temperature I'm actually charging in. And we'll see exactly how hot this pump gets after charging 70% of the battery. And we'll put some of those rumors that the pump heats up too much and will ruin your insulin. And hopefully put those rumors to bed. So I'll be back in a few. Okay, so I'm back, and our pump is officially at 95% charged, and the time is, ignore that number, 12.25, it's charging for about 45 minutes at this point in time, <coughs> we'll go ahead and do a quick temperature set reading. 68.6. Well, let's do that again. Okay, 80.1. That sounds about right. But to be more accurate, the insulin reservoir is on the back. So, that I believe is about the spot where the battery is. 79.3. The insulin reservoir, 77.6. Not once. Let's see here. 76. I can't find really any 79. I can't find any really good hot spots on it, to tell you the truth. As I scan over this pump, um, 79 seems to be the hottest. I'm going to guess that's probably where the battery is right there. Or a charging mechanism. Some kind of circuitry to do with it. So, okay, that pretty much answers it.
45 minutes of charging the pump <coughs> with the cable that's designated for it with the charger that came with it which is a 1 amp charger and not once did we reach over the temperature of the 98.6 maximum that Novolog is capable of handling. By the way, I have done this before. I actually had it in my pocket while it was charging, and it still never reached over 98.6. I just wanted to kind of prove this point that even if the battery gets a little warm, even if you're charging it more than a daily top off, when you let the battery go down to 30%, you're still still charging 95 not going to reach over that 98.6 so I hope this puts any of those rumors to rest and I'll probably do another video when I open up the Humalog I haven't tried the Humalog yet but I got two sample bottles of it and I'm kinda curious if it would be better for the summertime I don't know if it has a better maximum temperature than the Novolog or not I haven't looked at the spec sheet on it yet but I would be curious to see if that, if it does or not. So I hope this puts any current T Slim pump owners kind of at rest with any stress they may have about it by reading those rumors on the internet. Not everything you read on the internet is true. And in addition, anybody that's considering purchasing the T Slim pump. If you run across those rumors like I did before I did the actual purchase of the pump, it also puts it to rest as well. Uh, again, I stand clear on my recommendation. If you're going to use a different charger, use a trusted charger. You are dealing with a 6,000, 6,700, 6,900, I don't know what the actual sticker price is, somewhere around there, medical device. So you don't want to go buying a really cheap charger, a really cheap car adapter, uh, cigarette letter charger and and trusting that it won't surge or uh, short out any piece of electronic on this pump not to mention this pump is hooked up to you it is your lifeline so I hope this was helpful to some people and thanks for watching